the Marine Corps Commandant was doing two jobs. No. Why, why aren't you? Marine Corps Commandants probably to got 2,000 people to work for him, okay? So, uh, and uh, somebody said he's working 18 hours a day. Jack Reed blamed me for his heart attack. Come on, give me a break. This guy's going to work 18, 20 hours a day no matter what. That's what we do. You know, I did that for years because you got to get the job done and you take it for you try to do everything yourself. So uh, we're not going to go down that road. Let's not move past. I did that for years. Ostensibly. No disrespect to the sport as a football coach. That was Alabama Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville, a man who has never served in the military, much less at the highest levels, claiming that the stresses of doing two jobs in the military for 20 hours a day are no different than the job he, quote, did for years, which was the job of a football coach. It's a shocking thing to think, let alone say out loud, particularly since Tuberville's hold on military promotions over the Pentagon's abortion health care policies are what caused people like Marine Corps Commandant Eric Smith to have to juggle multiple military leadership positions, which he was doing without complaining until he was hospitalized this week after suffering a heart attack. And now Tuberville's Senate colleagues and the Republican ones are fed up with him and the grandstanding, and they're trying to find ways to work around him. Yesterday, the Senate confirmed three nominees who Tuberville had been holding up. But as the Associated Press reports, quote, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said Thursday he was pleased that the Senate confirmed the three officers. But, quote, we still have more than 370 superbly qualified leaders who have seen their nominations unnecessarily stalled, he said. As we face a variety of urgent challenges, the most powerful fighting force in history must be at full strength. Joining me at the table, the founder of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America and host of the Independent Americans podcast, Paul Rykoff, is back. Um, wow. Yeah. Happy Friday. Yeah. I mean, we could do a segment every week called This Week in Stupid, starring Senator Tommy Coverville. <laughs> I mean, every day he finds a new way to double down on stupid. I mean, he's ridiculous. He's radical. He's extreme. I think he's the most dangerous member of the Senate because of the extreme way he's pushing his culture war on the military and he's just mucking up the works. I've been a football coach. I'm still a football coach. We have a playoff game next week. And I've been a soldier. The two aren't even close. And to compare the two just is double down on the insulting nature of what he's doing. I've got eight-year-olds who know more about leadership and setting an example than Tommy Tuberville. And I think what's happening now is actually maybe a sign of, of some, some positivity because we've been talking about who's going to do something about this. Tommy Tuberville might be the one thing uniting Democrats and Republicans right now. Mm -hmm. Finally, the mm -hmm. dam is broken. Dan mm -hmm. Sullivan, Joni Ernst, Lindsey Graham mm -hmm. is now even looking good compared to Tommy Tuberville. Mm -hmm. That's happening because they're uniting around one thing. And maybe that's a silver lining in this, that we can finally see some common ground for Republicans and Democrats to work together against extremists. I hate when people say, why doesn't the military speak up? They do enough, right? Yeah. But who takes this case to the country? I think we're doing it right now. I think Lloyd Austin's been doing the best he can. I think he's been picking his spots. I think he's a brilliant secretary of defense, and he's very, very smart in the way he approaches these political situations. Seven former secretaries of defense have spoken out. Admiral Mike Mullen, who I think is, is one of the finest leaders of our time, the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, has spoken out. Everybody's spoken out. But the key now that's moving the needle is moderate Republicans who are also veterans. All those folks I mentioned have served in uniform, and they're making a dent. And Tuberville's feeling the pressure. You want to see what a quarterback looks like under pressure? It's Tuberville being surrounded by the media, being surrounded by his colleagues. They got him against the ropes, and I think they just got to keep the pressure on because right now we've got two aircraft carriers off the coast of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. We've got American drones operating over Gaza. We've got uh, Beirut mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, Marines at the, at the embassy in, Lev in, 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 uh, sorry, in Israel. We've got Marines on the ground Marines right there, are protecting and they don't have our, a commandant. All of our, all they of don't our have a commandant, right, because he had a heart attack, and this guy wants to compare being a football coach or being the commandant of the Marine Corps. It's adding insult to stupidity but it's vintage Tommy Tuberville. It's important to, I, I think, always level up to, just because Republicans are now in agreement, some of them, the ones you named, it's still not solved. I mean, he still controls this, and they still don't have a pathway to confirming all of the appointees. How does that logjam break? 
with strategy. You know, I think we've talked about this. There have been a lot of folks whining on, on cable news and in the Senate. What's the actual strategy? They're finally talking about changing the rules. Schumer's talking about that. And now it looks like he's got Republican support. This is about our national security. If we have to change the rules to respond to extremism in the military, we do it. Our politics has to be able to respond as well. So I think this is an right. example of a failure of imagination, a failure of strategy. And it's on Schumer. It's on McConnell. It's on the president. It's on all of them to find a strategy to neutralize this guy because he's doing more to damage our national security than anybody else out there with the exception of maybe Trump. Hamas loves seeing this. Putin loves seeing this. And every day our enemies are celebrating this extreme person. I've called Senator Redneck. I mean, this guy is so extreme. He's so out of touch. He wants to drag us back to the 1800s. It was remarkable to see a Republican senator making the argument that our enemies love this, that everyone watching loves this. Yeah.